around the world and trying to arrange. I mean, it can work. Right, for me. right. It can work. Oh, for me we sometimes. got him. Oh, there we go. We can't see you, Lawrence. Can't. Mm mm. You gotta turn your video on. There you go. go. How you doing? Not bad. How are you, sir? I'm good, thank you. Brilliant. Well, am I okay to start now? Yes. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. Okay. Well, thank you both so much for talking on behalf of Wards Watch. Um, how are you both doing? Yeah, thank you. Okay. Great. How are you? I'm not too bad, thank you. Just completely different time zone and I've worked all day so I'm exhausted so let's get started shall we so um I guess it's kind of the age-old question that we all ask when we're interviewing anybody's worked on a film but how did you both end up working on Respect? Wow see if you want to take that first? Well I think you would probably start first so <laughs> Lawrence initially got the call first to to do the project and so I, normally I, how it works when you get called for a project, if makeup gets called first, they always say, well, do you know uh, hair referral? Because they like the trailers to be cohesive and you know, the vibe and sand and everything because we get the actors, you know, upon initial, you know, starting of the day. And so he requested me and that was a whole process. Um, so I'll let you take that part from there. Okay, so I initially got the call from Clint Ramos, um, a costume designer, um, on a referral from me and Neil, who's another hairstylist um, in New York City. But I, I talked to Jennifer about it uh, prior to it happening, but we had no initial start date in the beginning. It was just, you know, it was just, uh, just in the air, but nothing had been concrete as far as a production date like that. So I never revisited the thought of it, and and then. Um, when I did get the call, I immediately said yes, because I did have a working relationship with Jennifer. So I knew it was a project that I definitely wanted to be a part of. Wow. Okay. So why was it an issue? Was it, so Stephanie, you said that it was a bit of a challenge. Did Martin, did, um, I've just said so your name wrong there. So initially, well, initially what happened, okay. what happened, what happened is I spoke with Lisa, our, uh, director. And she asked me, who did I want for makeup? And I said, definitely Stevie Martin. I said, we have a great working relationship and I knew she'd be perfect for the job. So uh, upon that request on my, from me, I, it still was a bit of a journey getting her on board because um, um, there were just a lot of back and forths and when people wanted to be sure that it was okay with Jennifer, but Jennifer on the other hand would, was no problem at all. She was open to whatever I suggested and had no no qualms about it and i knew that stevie would be the perfect person for the job so so it finally happened so was it just well stevie? initially why i said it was a journey was because and to make a long story short because i know you've been working all day uh because this is aretha franklin it's a it's an icon you're telling an icon story and so you know they look at your resume and my friend here has you know had awards and compared to myself looking at my resume it was like oh you know she's done a lot of work but we don't really know her so it's kind of like can she take on a job because we're not sure and he's like no like I know her work like she'll be great for the job so then they wanted other people he didn't want to work with them it was just a back and forth and so when they finally said yes it was kind of like, you know, I had to prove myself that, you know, I can make this movie happen. No pressure, even though it was Aretha Franklin. Um, so it was kind of like I had to go in and kind of like the underdog, you know, I'm always team underdog. So it was like I had to go in and prove that I could do this movie and make sure that it was historically accurate, that it was true to who Aretha was uh, through the lens of makeup. And I was adamant about having Stevie on board, definitely. So was it quite daunting for you then, Stevie, to go on to something like Respect, where you're literally being being given the responsibility to make Jennifer Hudson look like Aretha Franklin? Oh, yes. It was definitely like, hey, let's pass the baton like you're in the Olympics. Like, we need you to win this race. So you're kind of like, oh, I don't really know if you're going to win it because it doesn't look like, you know, 
you have the sauce, so you have the juice, and then you just come and you take it home, and you know everybody is like, you know, I did pay homage and was historically accurate and did right by Aretha Franklin. Okay, so finally it's all sorted. You're on production. You're finally working on the film. It might sound like a stupid question because I know that you're meant to, but did you both work quite closely then during the whole process of filmmaking? Absolutely. We were in the same trailer, um, just a few chairs apart. So Steve and I have this quiet language that we, well, the silent language that we have. Uh, it's just basically looking down at each other to know exactly what what the timing's looking like. Um, you know, I can look down and I know that in two minutes, Stevie's almost done with Jennifer and she's about to, to sit in my chair. So we definitely have this, this language that we have amongst each other. But um, being in the same trailer was a fortunate situation because uh, after COVID, trailers were separated. So there was a uh, hair and makeup trailers are, are totally separated now. And um, and that kind of can cause a problem with timing and things like that, not being able to see exactly how far along uh, that particular artist may be in makeup. So therefore I'm just waiting for the door to open for someone to come in, not knowing what's going on. But because we were uh, pre-COVID, we had a rhythm that really, really worked for our good. Um, especially when we had large days with the large cast. So being in the same trailer definitely helped us. So fingers crossed and touch wood, are you, because obviously it's been a bit of a journey with COVID, kind of we've seen spikes and we've been to lockdown, lockdown. Now that for a while now, things have been back to fairly normal. Are you now on sets being begin to see how it was like pre-COVID? Um, Steve, you want to answer that? Uh, yes, it definitely makes the difference. Um, definitely that is an advantage to be in a trailer together, you know, that way, because that was tag team and involved. If you were in crunch time, I was able to walk over to Lawrence and be like, you know, can I, uh, do these last touches on our nails or can I do these last touches? Because I know we got to go out. And now with COVID, you can't really do that. It's your trailer's here, my trailer's there. So you basically have to make sure that you have done everything that you need to do within a certain time frame that you're given. Because after that, we gotta be six feet apart. We can't be together. So, you know, that that is an advantage that we had pre-COVID doing hair and makeup that you are able to tag team with, you know, hair and makeup, all hands on deck, to get everybody ready. And I'm glad that that happened pre-COVID because it will make it difficult now if we were to do a movie like that and making sure, you know, everything was done right, just, you know, last minute things. And it makes it difficult when it, when you have to be separate because our environment was never meant to be separated or six feet apart. So, does it work during, so with hair and makeup, is there like a certain rule you follow? Is it hair first, makeup next, makeup next, and hair, do you do them both together? Pre-COVID, of course. Um, um, it really... It's pretty much a conversation at first. It's like, yeah. you know, who do you want to start with first or timing everything out of who comes to who and who all you have to do. So me and Lawrence kind of made sure that we worked on the same people so that it was easy for us to flip-flop uh, tag team or start whoever we needed to. So was there any pressure then when working on this on this movie to kind of, I know I touched on it with you, Stevie, but was there any pressure to make Aretha Franklin, no, to make Jennifer Hudson into Aretha Franklin, to make Marlon Wayans into Ted White? Because obviously you're turning into well-known respected actors into these other well-known respected icons now in history. Um, there was definitely pressure, but um, going on to the project, we definitely wanted to be as accurate as possible and have everybody look uh, as authentic as possible. So having the references that we had, whether it was editorials from back in the day, photographs from back in the day, or um, things that we found online, we definitely wanted to be as close to these particular people as possible just to be, um, be on point and pay homage to them and give them the respect that that was due. Because the direction concerning makeup was from Lisa, the director. She didn't want uh, the characters to have a lot of makeup, but she wanted it definitely to be historically accurate with some of the uh, trends that were going on as far as makeup, as far as hair. 
because you know back in those times the emphasis wasn't necessarily on those things but you knew when you looked at it what the genre and the period was so did the director because every director's got their own process how they work with their actors and their crew did this director work with you closely was it more in terms of this film or kind of right you know what you're doing i'm gonna let you do what you gotta do she definitely worked with us, you know, um, closely. Um, we had meetings and, you know, we would go through the meetings and go through the looks and she would tell us, you know, what her ideas were. And even when it came down to the moment of uh, Jennifer as Aretha in the end of the movie, when she hit rock bottom, um, the director definitely took everybody out of Video Village to ask me, am I sure that, you know, I really wanted to go in that direction with the makeup because this was a vulnerable moment. And she wanted Jennifer to be protected and make sure that she was okay with looking vulnerable and rock bottom. And I said, no. And I said, I think that this is, this is what we should do. And she trusted that moment and it ended up on film. And so that's just how closely she worked with makeup and hair to make sure that this was done right. And it was given honor and paying homage to Aretha Franklin. And I think that straight out of the gate, once we did the camera test and we had a good rhythm going, she totally trusted our vision on this project. And, you know, there was no hovering, but there was, all, there was always, uh, small questions about this or that, whether we wanted to go uh, exact with something or if we wanted to just, you know, elude to it. So she definitely was that type of director. She wasn't hovering over us, but she did trust the process. Okay, so was there any, not just for respect, but just in any of your work, is there any sort of inspiration that you turn to to kind of help you with your work? Um, mm -hmm. most, most definitely, especially if it's a period piece. Um, whether whether it's referring to old movies or whether it's referring to um, just images that we find out there uh, by Googling them, or even if we go to Pinterest, um, there are a lot of resources out there that will definitely help you. Um, but I do follow that closely when it comes to period movies and period pieces that I do because I want it to be as authentic as possible. Um, and a lot of times when researching these photographs, especially uh, with things that are done in the mid to early 1800s. A lot of the photographs are just in black and white. So the detail um, that would be there normally if it was a color photograph is not there. So you have to kind of find out what the color palette of that time period was because each, each time period, believe it or not, has a color palette. And with me, I like to consult with costumes as well as the art department before moving forward with my uh, research or before topping off my research just to make sure I'm on the same page that they are. My process kind of involves making, as you would call like mood boards, lookbooks, um, so that you always have something to visually refer to as you're going through. Um, so I like to, for each character, do that. And as well as background to kind of give the other makeup artists an idea and the time frame, like Lauren said, the color palette. So something that I like to do is always have something visually in front of me in the trailer where that I can reference to throughout um, a project. Okay, so I've got one final question for you and then I'll let us all be. So what was the best <laughs> thing about, what was the best thing about working on Respect? For me, it was the live performances. Um, I definitely, wanted to be able to tell this story with all, all accuracy, as, as much accuracy as possible. But I think my favorite part was seeing those performances and actually learning the words to the songs and knowing the backstory. Um, and knowing the backstory definitely helped me contribute to what I need to contribute um, as far as the looks were concerned. But I would definitely say the performances were some of the best scenes for me. I would agree with that. The performances. The way, the way Jennifer performed um, as Aretha, it kind of made you feel like you were really at a concert or you were really at, you know, the Amazing Grace documentary that she sung, like, and like the music evoked emotions. And so it just made you feel like you were there and caught up in the moment. And a lot of those 
uh, moments were authentic because they kept the cameras rolling and everybody was into it. So just to stand back to be a part of that, it was it was amazing because it was like, wow, like we helped cre- recreate these moments for people to see. Well, and with that, that's it for this interview. But I'd like to thank you both immensely for taking some of your time to speak with us. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank, thank you, you for-, for taking the time as well. I know you're tired, but thank you for having us. It's an absolute pleasure. It's not an issue at all. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Thank you Bye. very much. Bye.